Well, thanks again. I um, hope you're not bored of me by now. But uh, <coughs> So for the next 10 minutes, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the role of partnerships in regenerative medicine from a GSK perspective, as this is a partnering meeting. Um, although it's worth pointing out that uh, in R&D at GSK in 2013, uh, we've had five new medicines approved this year, and we have a sixth one under review uh, for diabetes uh, that we have a decision by the end of this year. So it's been a record year for R&D. Um, however, we do view the next wave of medicines as coming from our partnerships. And across R&D, we made a decision around five years ago to externalize the pipeline. And we now have a balance of around 50-50 of programs and partnerships with external academics and biotech companies. These are the larger partnerships that we have um, in R&D that complement the internal discovery performance units, the DPUs, where we restructured around four years ago to focus on specific areas. You see those listed at the top half. They're the internal groups, and these are our external partnerships on the bottom. I'm going to talk about the regenerative medicine unit that we set up and created five years ago. We have one partnership uh, with the Harvard Stem Cell Institute that I'll highlight uh, for drug discovery, where the goal is to make a regenerative medicine. Um, and talk about another partnership that we have with the Telethon Institute of Gene Therapy in Cell Therapy um, that we, I alluded to earlier in the panel session. So these are now integrated and pivot, uh, really critical from an R&D and um, senior level uh, within uh, GSK as providing the next wave of medicines. So our strategy in regenerative medicine through these partnerships is that we're not going to do all of this on our own at GSK. We have a two-pronged approach for applying stem cell science to drug discovery and working with external experts. Um, and we have ways of complementing our internal platform capabilities particularly our compound sets, and providing new cells for drug discovery. The IPS-based screening approach that we've been doing in a partnership with Cellular Dynamics, that I'll talk about uh, for the last three years, as well as using them, the same cells for predictive safety assessment. And I think it's fair to say that most pharma companies are doing some of this uh, in a in similar way today. And so I think that is a reflection of the progress that's been made in the fundamental science and also the powerful uh, IPS-based technology. We also have cell-based um, uh, programs in gene therapy and also uh, drugs, uh, classical small molecules and biofarms in our pipeline for different approaches. And I'll talk about some of those. <clears throat> but what we'd like to try to do is um, recapitulate what we did over 10 years ago with ligand um, in drug discovery in uh, finding a new molecule a small molecule mimetic of thrombopoietin. This was approved in 2008. It took around 10 years of intensive drug discovery and development effort within GSK. It was approved first for idiopathic thrombocytopenia. So that's where pa patients have low platelets and are at risk of bleeding and bruising. This molecule um, was specifically designed to target bone marrow progenitor and stem cells. It's focused on that pathway, and it, as you can see, it causes uh, leads to rapid uh, increase in platelet counts and responders. Th so there's a few learnings from this discovery uh, and development program, and critically, the translational medicine studies. This readout takes eight days to understand the dose and the response of that molecule. So within the first six months of the clinical program, we knew that, there was an act that we had an active drug. So <clears throat> it's now been approved for uh, other thrombocytopenic indications, in a series of indication sequencing uh, and has proved to be a very successful commercial medicine. And as I mentioned earlier, we would love to be able to find uh, similar drugs that do the same in the brain, in the heart, the lungs, and that's what our IPS-based uh, screening approach has done uh, <coughs> and also our alliance with Harvard, the Stem Cell Institute uh, across um, <coughs> in Boston, which is a collection of uh, nearly a 1,000 investigators who specialize in all they do is stem cell science, and they have access to uh, drug, uh, sorry, cell-based screening platforms for uh, looking at GSK compounds. We've been working with them for a number of years now in, in a number of diseases, 
Um, we provide them with compounds and expertise and true project teams to look at transitioning assays in these different diseases into GSK for further scale up and um, ultimately for drug discovery and clinical development. And um, we're in the process of renewing that alliance for, for the next five years as well. So, so this provides us with good access to breaking science uh, across um, regenerative medicine and plays into one of the strengths of GSK in terms of compound screening and drug discovery. A parallel alliance and technology that we set up three years ago with, uh, I think, the field leaders in IPS today is with Cellular Dynamics. And that alliance um, <clears throat> has been really productive for us in a number of areas, using cardiomyocytes for not just safety assessment and predictive toxicology, so we'd like to be able to weed out molecules that are cardiotoxic earlier with human cell-based assays, but also for drug discovery. Um, we have screened our full compound set on cardiomyocytes derived from iPS cells, and we have some very interesting data there. We're also doing similar approaches in neurons, in motor neurons, and applying that. And these, these technique, this technology and the work with CDI has provided us to access for very high-quality cells, um, good quality control, and so we are looking to extend that partnership in the future, and we see that's a very important platform uh, for R&D. So changing gears to cell-based medicines, we have uh, an alliance with the Telethon Institute in Italy that uses stem cells, C34 hematopoietic stem cells, and gene therapy to correct um, uh, genetic uh, disorders. And this was the first alliance that a pharmaceutical company had set up in the stem cell gene therapy field. Just as a quick recap, this is a very complicated autologous uh, medicine, and it took us a long time within the organization to get our heads around what was that medicine and the business model and how you deliver that and the infrastructure to patients. And simply, it's a you know, bone marrow uh, aspirate taken from a patient. The C34 stem cells are enriched uh, automatically. In parallel, a vector, a viral vector is made that has the corrected gene that is used to transduce the cells that are then transplanted back to the patient. So we were really impressed with the clinical data that had come out of um, the Telethon Institute. It was published in New England Journal. The lead indication was ADA SCID, which is an immunodeficiency. Uh, it's similar to the bubble boy disease where children don't develop an immune system and they have life-threatening complications. And the clinical data there were very, very promising. So we've completed that phase three trial and we're looking to file that medicine which is this autologous stem cell transduce cells in Europe next year. And behind that, what's very important is that we've been able to shift to a lentiviral vector system, which we believe will be more efficient and uh, have an even safer profile. And that vector is made uh, in collaboration with Molmed in Italy, who you may have heard from yesterday, um, using a high quality production system. We're collaborating with them to optimize that process and scale it and do a number of process development and sequencing work as well inside GSK. And we have two other diseases, metachromatic leukodystrophy and whisker aldrich syndrome. And behind that are four other diseases in this pipeline. So we see creating an infrastructure for these medicines to get to patients over the next five to ten years. Um, and we published in collaboration, the Telethon Group led this trial, these two trials, um, published in Science in the summer the output from the first three patients that were treated with whisker aldrich syndrome and with metachromatic leukodystrophy, where there were really profound clinical uh, benefits in those children. Uh, these are life-threatening diseases, and there were very clear uh, responses clinically uh, in these trials. We're going on now, we're reviewing these data, we treated more patients, and looking at ways to accelerate the development of uh, these particular programs. In parallel with that, We've also created a number of partnerships to look at um, accelerating this whole cell therapy pipeline and gene therapy. It's complicated, um, and we're going to require working with external experts, and one of those is the Catapult Group in the UK. We created an alliance there earlier this year to really access and partner on regulatory approaches and also commercial models and reimbursement. And so we're looking forward to progressing with that, uh, particularly in the UK and, and globally. So just to summarize, um, what I've just been able to show you at a high level, I haven't really shared too much science, but we have two, two approaches to our regenerative medicine strategy. The first is leveraging our uh, drug discovery capabilities, our compound libraries, and our screening platforms. 
and we're doing that by accessing new science in the stem cell field through the Harvard Alliance, as well as deploying the IPS technology expertise that Cellular Dynamics have pioneered in the field. And uh, we have been able to do this in the past with uh, the discovery and approval of Promacta uh, for thrombocytopenia. In parallel, we have a second approach based on cell-based uh, medicines that really have strong clinical data and strong mechanism of action data where we're using gene therapy to correct patients' immune systems. Um, and we're doing that in partnership with the Telethon Institute in Italy, together with Molmed, who make the vectors, and also um, with Catapult. And we see this as the first phase and the first steps forward uh, for GSK. And we're very interested in other approaches uh, based on strong science and um, these types of partnerships we see continuing. So I'm very happy to take any questions outside, and thank you very much.